Britain's vote to leave the European Union has put a considerable strain on economies across the continent and the IMF has uh, just downgraded growth forecasts because of it. This week the ECB meets for the first time since the vote. Will it raise, rise the occasion and help out with uh, further easing or will it say it's doing enough already? Simon French is Chief Economist at Pamir Gordon joins us now. Simon, welcome. We're looking at this in terms of uh, where we are with the euro and uh, the euro against other currencies mm. because we've seen a lot of easing already from the European Central Bank. But globally, a lot of central banks are becoming more active, aren't they? That's right, and the danger is the ECB have fired their shots. They haven't got many shots left to fire, as the other central banks around the world, most noticeably in Japan and in the UK and potentially in China, are all starting to move into stimulative mode. Danger the euro gets caught in the vice as a result of these geographical moves. So the outcome of that would be then to raise the value of the euro against those currencies, something that Mario Draghi doesn't want. That's right. Let's focus very briefly before we get into more detail mm. on that on, on this this Thursday's announcement from the ECB. Yeah. Everything stays as you... Everything stays as is, I believe. I think he got everything he wanted from the Governing Council uh, in terms of the corporate bond buying program. I don't think he will want given where yields have gone, which well, first pass is a success story for him on the corporate bond side to add further policy moves at this stage. But he does need to be mindful that a lot of those currency movements coming down the line will not be beneficial for his forward inflation expectations. He has a big problem with global deflationary forces coming through the commodities route that continues to stifle uh, the ability to get back towards that 2% target. The only upside really for him is the slightly more upbeat picture in the US in recent sessions, which has driven the dollar higher, which of course helps with that crucial cross-trade euro, euro dollar. Yeah, the euro dollar uh, trading at the moment at 110. The, the vertical dotted blue line is where that uh, big red candle was when uh, we saw a big pullback in the euro on the day following the EU referendum. Mm. Um, there is one other aspect, of course, in Europe that is becoming a real concern. That is the Italian banks, uh, which could ultimately be an even bigger drag on the economy than, than, than Brexit. Is this something that the ECB has got to be mindful of? or I mean, You're saying basically they don't have any more ammunition? Well, I don't think they can ignore the issue of Ita the Italian banking system, particularly not in the backdrop of the ECJ ruling around Slovenian bank intervention that came earlier in the week. And what you saw there was that uh, subordinated debt holders were ruled against. They had to sacrifice some of their capital ahead of the Slovenian government providing the, the bail-in money. Why is that relevant for Italy? Well, of course, uh, Mario, uh, uh, Matteo Renzi has been talking about uh, an injection of capital from the Italian state, but clearly private debt holders are going to be on the hook if that ECJ ruling acts as a precedent, and that really is starting to wobble some of the equity prices across the Italian banking system, which could quickly morph into a systemic crisis. How do you see the second half of this year then developing uh, with regard to the ECB and uh, the way in which uh, the Eurozone performs? Well, I think the focus moves away from quantitative easing and interest rates and towards much more targeted intervention. You look at the rhetoric that uh, Mario Draghi has been using around targeting interventions within the corporate uh, debt market at sectors um, that, are, that he wants to intervene in to incentivize the right behavior. It looks increasingly like the type of quantitative easing that we've seen in Japan for some months, where you're looking at companies that are creating employment offering wage rises being rewarded by the Bank of Japan. That strategy may well be coming to Europe and Mario Draghi may provide some colour to that. Uh, so authorities becoming involved, the government's becoming more involved, fiscal stimulus more would be the, th the way forward? Well fiscal stimulus has been something that Mario Draghi has been pleading for for many many uh, months. The problem is that nobody appears to be listening because of course he with one, vo with one voice he says we need more fiscal stimulus, more structural reforms, but with the other voice he says we must be respectful of the fiscal rules. He's mindful that when he goes back to the governing council there is certainly the German voice supported by more conservative uh, country leaders within the um, governing council who will be saying no no we don't want to uh, loosen the strictures of the growth and stability pact 
even though you think that this will provide the kind of stimulus that the Eurozone um, needs. The problem is lead economic leadership is not united in what comes next. Yeah, OK. All right, uh, Simon, thanks indeed uh, there for joining us. That is Simon French from Pamir Gordon.